Let's get across to Chicago. Larry Shover is from Efficient Capital Management and joins us with his thoughts. Are you seeing that same lack of conviction uh, amongst your peers as well at the moment, Larry? Brooke, that's a great way to put it. Today was the most controlled down moves I have seen in a long time. Yeah, we corrected quite a bit in the equity markets. Uh, the risk off trade is uh, in vogue again. But hey, you know, it was controlled. It was necessary. It was a culmination of so many different factors. There didn't seem to be a whole lot of fear. The only outlier right now is that we did close on the lows. And that's obviously spilling over into your market right now. We've seen manufacturing numbers in the past 24 hours out of Australia, the UK, uh, Europe, the US and China. Do you think that is what is yeah. troubling markets? I mean, what are you trying to, when you're trying to get to the bottom of, of the, the worry factors, how big is that one? I think it's a big one. I was particularly concerned with the UK. Uh, that number was revised downward with the Eurozone as well, but it was, it was the lowest number since 2009. And uh, the UK has been, their, their economy has been so strong. And uh, given the fact that their number came out uh, at a two, 2009 low, it seems like we've retraced a lot of good action over the past year and a half. And uh, it's particularly worrisome for uh, you know, their output and uh, their trade in general. The copper price has been particularly volatile, and this is something you, you've noticed. Is that a reflection of this uncertainty about where the global economy goes, given we often do talk about it as a, as a, a key economic barometer, I guess? Yes, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch you. What are you, are you talking about, the, the latest number? On the copper, yeah, on the copper price. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, copper. Copper is, is a great indicator. And uh, I, I told your sister station uh, just yesterday, actually, that I see price action between 375 and 425. And obviously, we fell 2% today uh, just with the risk off trade being in vogue again. But, you know, the, the picture in China right now isn't particularly rosy, especially with uh, their housing uh, issues and the, the property numbers. It just came out yesterday that that their housing uh, sales were down 12.5% in 26 cities. Um, right now, they're continuing to build homes with uh, reckless abandon, abandon, but credit is becoming tight. People are worried that the inventory is going to be sold at fire sale prices, and there's, there's going to be a general slowdown in copper prices. So uh, right now, the trade in copper is probably to sell at the money options. The volatility is so high. Can't see copper falling too much below 375 and not too much higher than 425 in the next three months. Hi Larry, Chris Stott here from the studio in Sydney. You mentioned the copper price there and you're talking about potential trading opportunities shorter term. What about commodities across the board? We've seen them really come off their highs uh, in the last four to six weeks. Do you think there's further downside across all commodity baskets, particularly the bulks? That's a great question, and there is some downside uh, potential in all commodities. I'm more focused on copper just because it seems like the Chinese are, are buying it when it gets too low and selling it when it gets too high. They're acting as traders right now. They, they're, they're, they're defending the scrap inventory that they have. They're defending the abundant warehouses that have 500,000 tons of, uh, of uh, really good grade copper right now. When it comes to other commodities, uh, there's so many more factors. I just, th I just think that copper in general, is a, a controlled market right now. I wouldn't say the same thing when it comes to ags. I definitely wouldn't say the same thing when it comes to aluminum or steel. And in regards to the Chinese market, we've seen some uh, weaker data come, starting to come through as a result of all the, the tightening in monetary policy we've seen uh, in the last six to nine months. I mean, do, what, to what extent do you think that will move the markets? We're going to get softer data probably in the next few months from China. To what extent do you think that will move the markets? Yeah, I, th I think the important thing is to see if they get their inflation to, to their target of 4%. But it definitely will move the markets, especially your market, unfortunately. And we're going to see a little bit of a downdraft because, let's face it, there's a slowdown right now. And China has its problems of food inflation, a glut of property, and they keep building it with reckless abandon, as I've said. Um, you're going to be the recipient of that right now for the short term. There might be some good buying opportunities for you in the equity market as things get over-exaggerated, but I would watch China very, very closely. Can I ask you about gold as well? That's actually stayed strong amid all of this um, selling today, of course, as a, as a more of a safe haven, I suppose. Um, do you see gold doing anything but headed higher, considering these kind of economic reads um, and considering, say, the big Eurozone issue that yeah. we continue to talk about? 
Yeah, you know, gold was very sloppy today. It wasn't the safe haven that most of us would think it would be, uh, given uh, the sell-off in the equity market. But with that said, uh, people aren't talking about the eurozone problems, the bank stress tests that are coming up. Not to mention. Um, uh, just the, the uh, problems in Greece and et cetera. That said, if there is a problem, if you believe that there is a problem in, uh, in Greece that's going to unfold and that uh, Germany and France will have to take bank haircuts, you need to buy gold. Otherwise, I'm very neutral on it. I think it's going to act more like an industrial metal than it will a precious metal. So why do you say it wasn't the safe haven you might have expected? What do you mean by that? Uh, you know, you'd think with the sell-off that we had today and the fact that, you know, copper was down 2 percent and that the equity markets were down 1.5 uh, percent, if not more, you'd think gold would be up $50 today just for all the uh, safe haven buying and the news that came out earlier today that both Russia and Mexico were adding to their reserves with gold. I was expecting a lot bigger uh, upside in the gold market. At 1540 an ounce, not very uh, impressive in my uh, perspective. Hey, Larry, something else. Um, JP Morgan coming out today and downgrading GDP forecasts for the US economy for the second time in a week, now talking about 2%. Yeah. But with that, with that note today, they've warned of, quote, a severe downgrade to that forecast in the case of a technical default. Now, this relates back to the US debt ceiling problem. So they're saying, um, basically, if we don't see um, some kind of resolution, I suppose they're saying. Um, everything's off the table. We'll pencil in a severe down, downgrade to growth forecasts. I'm just reading off the note now, but that seems to be a key issue for the next mm -hmm. couple of months, I suppose. Um, you did feel that there was some kind of price action around that in the gold price today, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I think gold, like I said, was a very sloppy trade and it didn't seem to reflect what was going on in the equity market per se, but more in uh, the debt ceiling issue, more in the Greek issue. Um, and it, it, to put it plainly, it seemed like it was a lot of malaise in the gold market. Um, it, it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of conviction, although uh, after the eco, uh, eco data came out this morning, it did rally quite a bit. But the rally did not continue. A lot of people think it was more single investors look, searching for the safe haven when, in fact, the institutions were all buying uh, the 10 year Treasury to get out of stocks and not buying gold. Well, Larry, you've given us a much deeper understanding of what's happened in some of those commodities overnight. So we thank you for that. Thanks for joining us from Chicago.